If you want continued success with your Singer Confidence Quilter Model 7469Q, it is important to keep it cleaned and fresh thread, that's quality thread, a new needle. And when you do this on a regular basis, your machine is going to treat you with respect back. And I'm gonna give you some tips of how to get in cleaning out the area below your throat plate. But before we do that, once a year, having your machine cleaned annually at your local soy machine store will also be beneficial. There's so many things that you and I can't reach, nor are we supposed to reach, um, that is happening behind all those covers, but they will be able to go in, do any adjustments, clean and oil all those moving parts. Believe me, there's a lot more than you realize inside a sewing machine. So what I'm going to show you is something that I recommend to my students to do every three to five bobbins. So if you're having any trouble right now and you're like, do I need to clean this machine and it's been a while, you're probably going to be a little surprised at what you're going to find underneath the throat plate. So what's going to happen is, is that lint and dust from your fabric is going to get pulled down below. So when we open this up, if there's a lot of lint, that's what we need to clean out. So fabrics that are linty are going to be things like cotton fabrics, fleece, flannel, even felt. How about that wonderful new minky and cuddle fabrics that's practically like faux fur? That's gonna really get down in your machine and bog things down, make skip stitches, make thread break when it's not supposed to. Those are all things that lend you to needing to clean this machine on a regular basis. So all you need to pull out from your accessories is your brush, which is on the opposite end of your seam ripper, by the way. So bring out a brush and then this is actually a screwdriver that's nice and short and those are going to help loosen the screws that are holding that throat plate in place. Now here's another little trick that I like to show. So I'm going to take my scissors and cut the thread at the tops of the spool and pull it out my needle. So instead of taking that spool off and dragging any lint that might be at your needle up through your machine and into it forever and ever until it's cleaned, that's gonna also not be good. So if you can clip and pull out, that will be ideal. Let's go ahead and take out our bobbin. And just so we don't stab ourselves, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the needle. And if you haven't changed your needle in a long time, let's just go ahead and get rid of this needle and plan to put a fresh one in when we're done. So there's only two things that we're actually going to remove from the machine. So they've made it very easy for things to be cleaned. And that's what part you need to play in making sure your machine is running smoothly. Notice once I get these loose, I can just kind of give them a little twirl with my fingers and set the two screws aside. You can also take off the presser foot, just the little tap on the back foot will be fine. That just kind of gives you a little bit more room and then go ahead and lift this plate off next. The last thing that we're going to take out is actually the bobbin case. That's this entire black unit that sits kind of in this basket hook area. And I'm going to just set it to this side. Now I haven't done a lot of stitching, so we do find that it's fairly clean. But if you've been sewing or even stitching through batting, cotton batting will be another culprit. And a lot of lint is going to gather in this area. First thing not to do, do not blow in this machine and do not use canned air. Canned air is going to blow more in than out. So what you want to do is take with your brush and start to lift out all the lint. So you'll find it in here and in the back and you can even get in. You can use a makeup brush, you can use a q-tip, you can use all sorts of things like that that can bring it out. There's even little miniature vacuum attachments that you could uh, use to suck out the lint. If you do a lot of sewing you'll know why that is so much easier than the brush but you'll find that you just need to get anything that doesn't look like it's supposed to be in there out. Okay. So putting things back in, you kind of notice there's a little bit of uh, two pointy areas that is going to face to the back of the machine. Here's the important part. See this little black heel? 
it is bouncing up against that spring. Make sure that those two are touching each other. Now there's gonna be a little wiggle, that's fine. What you don't wanna do is not notice that that's there and get this in sideways. So really, once it sits kind of down in the, the flush area and kind of can bounce up against that spring, it is in there correctly. And you can finish by placing the throat plate back in place, tightening up the screws, just so they're easy to get in and out for next time. Uh, the last thing I am going to do is actually put my needle in. I'll show you why. But go ahead and get all these pieces back together. We're going to put our bobbin back in. We're going to put our presser foot back on. Uh, make sure you tighten this up so they don't uh, wiggle loose. They don't have to be super tight, but just in there just enough. And then re-thread the top of your machine. So here's our bobbin. Remember, we're bringing it all the way down to about six o'clock. Let it fall in this little groove hold it, click it over to the side, and then follow the little path over the corner until you reach the back, which has the little cutter, and then pull towards you, and then finish by threading the machine. Oh, I'm gonna put the presser foot on next. That's a little easier. Perfect, and then thread the machine. Now, why did I tell you to put the uh, needle in last. If you put the needle in last, the foot is on and it's really easy to then lower it down into the space and brings it right up to where the opening is for where to bring that needle all the way up to the highest position. Now, how do you know if you've got that needle to the highest position? You can utilize your needle threader to check. So if your needle threader lines up with your needle when you go to use it, you know your needle is correctly positioned. So I have my machine threaded. The last thing to do is put the little door in place. And let's go ahead and do a quick little stitching and make sure everything is back together correctly. It's probably gonna sound a little bit better. And again, if you put that new needle in, you'll definitely have better results. So do that every three to five bobbins that you've gone through. And once a year, take your machine in to your local soy machine service department. Any soy machine store in your area would be qualified to service this machine and give it its annual cleaning. If you do this other part on a regular basis, trust me, this machine will treat you well and you'll be best friends forever. Check out all of our videos on the Singer Confidence Quilter 7469Q. There's links below this YouTube video. And if this has been helpful for you, remember give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel.